Tenemos el verdadero placer de encontrar aquí en Adesí el maravilloso Guillermo del Toro. Bienvenido. Merci beaucoup. And as you understood, we are about to uh, switch languages. Yes. As we please. That's the way it is. I like it. Thank you very much for being with us, Guillermo. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to start this, uh, not interview, but meeting with the one year memory. We yeah. met for the first time last year. Yeah. What were we doing exactly? You were directing me to announce that uh, the country of, uh, the guest country this year was going to be Mexico. And you wanted me to curse <laughs> and scream. <I> yes, yes. <laughs> and go, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> and say, Viva Mexico, cabrón. <laughs> and, and, and I did. Actually, we did. Yeah. You did. Like, you know, directors need to be obeyed. <laughs> so we announced something very important that yeah. we can see in yeah. every expression of the festival this year. Yeah. This year is about Mexico. Yes. What can you tell us about um, the, the vibration that comes from Mexico? Also, what do you feel? As someone who knows the festival like no other, what's different this year for you? Well, I think Mexico is uh, very active in animation in the last 15 years. Of course, we have a long history of animation, but not as fruitful because it's a very expensive, difficult medium technically. So there are sporadic films in the 40s and 70s and this and that, but not many features mostly short films. And in the last uh, 15 years, particularly stop motion has gained a lot of strength in Mexico and uh, people like Jorge, you know, uh, many animators that are working on large productions, Puss and Boots, Spider-Verse, um, and everything ha has been sort of conspiring to make uh, animation very, very uh, strong in Mexico and from Mexico. You, you were mentioning the, the 40s, the 50s. Uh, could you tell us, give us uh, maybe the first Mexican name that... Uh... Well, there, there were short films that were made mostly. I think the first uh, feature happened many years later. It was uh, a feature called Los Tre the Three Wise Men. And uh, many of the co-productions, Super Sabios and... Um, shorts for TV, for Cantinflas and so forth, they were done uh, collaborating with Spanish studios. So it really was very, very sporadic. The strong stuff uh, starts in the last 40 years, you know? When we start uh, doing stop motion in, in Mexico, it's a medium that you can more easily uh, succeed in making shorts because you need the puppets, the sets, But you can, uh, one person alone can do it. A, a, a hand-drawn 2D animation requires hundreds of artists, hundreds of tables, hundreds of photographic uh, stations and so forth. Uh, whereas a stop motion, you need a tabletop miniature, a couple of models, your camera, and you can do it. And it starts in the mid-80s. Um, I think that it starts very strong in my hometown. Uh, We start doing animation, stop motion there, and uh, a lot of new generations start uh, using that equipment, and it grows. Uh, a couple of the shorts win uh, prizes in competition. Uh, 2D animated shorts like uh, The Hero, Carlos Carrera wins uh, the Palm d'Or in Cannes for short. Uh, there's an emergence of commercial movies. You know, there's a lot of activity. We were speaking about the Mexican industry uh, of uh, animation. Uh, now let's skip to your personal animated industry. Yeah. Can you tell us the, the, maybe the first animated step you had in your life? The, the, the very first moment you felt animated or I started, about I st to be? I started doing animation with my first shorts. I was eight, eight years old. And I had my Super 8 camera from my father. And I started uh, moving uh, pieces of clay or little clay figures. And um, th they were horrible, but they, they moved. And th then I noticed that the camera didn't have a one frame 
functions and they were very jerky. You were shooting 10, 12, 20 frames a second mm-hmm. each shot. So we, uh, I bought a new camera that had a one, one frame, uh, so you could do 24 frames a second with 24 poses and that was the beginning. And uh, I never stopped until I started doing uh, live action features. Then I, I moved on to that and I started producing animation again later. So there is clearly a, um, a love and a life story with animation. And um, now I would like you to, to tell us about your memories here in Nancy. Do you remember your very first festival, why you were here and how you felt? I came, I came here without any movie uh, a while ago. This is my fourth or fifth Nancy. I came officially, I believe, with Troll Hunters. Mm-hmm. It was the first time I officially came. I had visited uh, the, a little uh, at the end of the festival before a year or two before, and I mostly went shopping to the uh, bookstore, and I, I didn't have a, a pass, and I was just visiting. Uh, and I really wanted to come back, and with Troll Hunters, we came back officially and presented that. And this is my, I think, my fourth festival, and it's been growing and becoming more important. And I think it's one of the most vital festivals in the world. If you realize, when you have festivals like Cannes or Venice or Berlin, which are established film festivals for very established directors, but are attended by the critics, uh, market, it's very, very sort of adult. Mm-hmm. middle-aged, uh, and sees attended by everybody that is a young filmmaker. It's very alive, very youthful. Uh, people that are up to speed with art, up to speed with uh, the latest animation, that they are actively doing animation, that want to change cinema. That's very important in Nancy. You are having a festival for the future. Precisely. Talking about the future and Annecy's festival, would you have uh, an advice for the festival? For having seen a lot of festivals, uh, live action, traditional, animation, everything, and for being as a visitor, as a jury member, as a a competitor with a live action or or short or long, what would you say to uh, a 60-ish years old festival who is about to start a new chapter as every year? Well, I think that uh, when you're young, uh, you, uh, you feel the urge to change the world and, and, and you should do it. That would be the only advice I would say, yes, whatever you think is wrong is more likely than not wrong. Very likely you're right and you should try to make it your work, your life work to change it and leave that little change behind. You know, I'm now 58 years old. I'm almost as old as a festival, you know? And uh, in 58 years, I imagine that movies could tell this type of stories, and I've been able to tell a few times that story. And that's what every young filmmaker should um, should know is he- we're here to do. Also on ANSI's festival, we had your first memory Uh, the very first time you came, do you have the best memory? What was your best ANSI festival? The the best memory, the the first one was the first time I came and I got lost. I I couldn't find downtown ANSI. I went into, I got very, very lost and I had no money for the taxi. So I was very desperate (laughs) to find a bookstore and have enough money to buy the bookstore. And the The best, I think that uh, every time I come here, I have one or two long dinners, and we end up talking until three, four, five in the morning. Those are the best memories. I think the great thing about the festivals and the great thing about Europe is that you can argue with people until until the morning. You know? Yeah, that's uh, like, there's a great joke about uh, two Frenchmen that are arguing, a third Frenchman comes in and says, I don't know what you're talking about, but I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I like. <laughs> Would you have the, the Mexican parallel for us yeah, to understand? Of course. The... 
Of course, the two, two Mexicans are arguing and the Mexican comes in and says, no sé de qué están hablando, pero no estoy de acuerdo. Okay, lo mismo. <laughs> the same. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> in Spain, when I lived in Spain, we did the same. We stayed very late, but it's very European. European discussion of art and film is very passionate, and I love that. You can argue about it like an art form. You don't talk about the business or the box office or the success. You're talking about the art, and that's very beautiful. Um, can we? Can Can you uh, give us um, maybe one or two facts, but also some secrets about uh, Pinocchio? Because facts and secrets. Well, secrets. Are, the, the reality is that if you know stop motion, uh, you know how it's made. There are the only secret is that. It requires uh, a, an absolutely unimaginable amount of work. But there are no, no real secrets in there. It's just hard work. And, and animators um, know that the process is observation and reproduction of the observation through a, an inanimate object. That's what I love, is animation is to animate, to take something that shouldn't be alive and simulate that is alive and emotional and thinking. Those are beautiful things. And actually, you did uh, something amazing with Pinocchio because we are um, overwhelmed by uh, the invisible work in every picture of the, yeah. of the way and also the, the depth of the emotion that drives us all along the, the film. Yeah. yeah, the important thing with that uh, stop motion was We didn't want to, we wanted people to feel the puppets thinking and feeling, uh, not just moving. Movement is easy or is easier than emotion. But if you see the character thinking and it looks like it's thinking, it's very, very powerful. You were telling us that um, this is your fourth or fifth yeah, festival was. in Nancy. We, I think it's fourth, yeah. For us, we have the impression that you belong to the festival and you're here every year. So my, my next question is, what uh, is the next project that will well, stop motion make I'm you come back? I, I'm hoping to do uh, a stop motion of the novel by Kazuo Ishiguro mm -hmm. called The Buried Giant. And uh, if I can get it made, that would be great. Uh, you know, people think that I can get anything made. It's not true. Uh, people still say no, <laughs> but we will try to make it happen. And what I like about it is it's an adult story. Uh, and I think it's important for me to prove that you can watch an adult drama with animated characters and, and feel and be enraptured by it. You don't need monsters or fantastical elements to make animation powerful. I think it's important for me to try it, you know, and I, I, I will do my best. So next year? No, this pro <laughs> no, like four years. Or no. Okay, We're, so we'll have to find another five. reason for yeah. next year. Yeah, next year I'll come for the, for the, uh, the company, the books, the arguments. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe one of my last questions, um, if you had a, an advice, that you could give to your younger self? For example, the Get on a diet. eight years old of you no. clipping some... Uh... No, I would say be patient. You know, it's, it's a, it's, I, I think Hollywood is a land of a very slow no. It takes a lot of, long time for them to say no, and it takes a long time for them to say yes. And it feels like your life is going by very, very badly when you're young. You're very desperate, and in reality, life is moving a little slower than you feel. That I would say that, you know, not that I would understand it, but I would say it. Okay, that's pretty interesting, actually, because we we had a lot of um, to the younger self advice here, and that's the first time that the the idea was to to realign ourselves to the time that pass. Yeah, and everybody tells you these stories. Uh, I remember when, uh, when I did Kronos, I mortgaged my house. I asked for a loan from the bank to get to my house 
to finance the movie, to finish it. And uh, Jim Cameron and I met back then, 30-something 30, 30 years ago, and he said to me, you know, that doesn't mean the movie is going to be successful. Everybody tells you, and then they sold their blood for science and they became very successful. You have to understand that things will go wrong in this career, and that doesn't mean everything goes wrong or things go slow or that you are told no. I mean, I'm 58, I've done 12 movies, and they still say no. And you have to know it as a young person. People see the other side of the career of somebody else and think everything goes great, and nothing goes great. Things happen, but they don't happen beautifully perfect. There's no moment of aha in, in a career, I don't think. Quizás podemos uh, concluir en español. Sí, claro. Y, a ti te va a costar más trabajo que a mí. Sí. Y uh, tú vas a hacer la conclusión uh, diciendo a, el, a la audiencia de Annecy uh, que, que tenemos que vivir en estos días que nos quedan Ajá. en la semana. Pues lo bonito de este festival es que estás en una nave de del de mismo tipo de enloquecidos, fanáticos, am, 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 amantes del arte que tú. Y eso es increíble porque eh, es como eh, venimos todos de familias donde somos la oveja negra, somos la gente rara. Y aquí en Anesí eh, se junta toda la gente rara y ya nadie es raro, es maravilloso. Es como un permiso para amar lo que amamos sin... Sin, eh, sin barreras, sin límite. Entonces hay que disfrutarlo a todo lo que da. Y estén en desacuerdo con... Si ven dos franceses, estén en desacuerdo. <risa> Así tenemos que amar, soñar, descubrir... Y argumentar. <risa> argumentar y animar también. Y animar, ah, eso sí, pero ya no durante el festival. <risa> Que Después. viva la animación Así. y que viva Guillermo del Toro. Y que viva México, cabrones. <risa>